I am wife, mother, businesswoman, born and raised in South Texas, longtime grassroots political activist. I knew instantly last year when I was first asked to run that I didn't like the choices that we were likely to have as Republicans. It took me about three months to decide to get in this race, but I've been that horse with the bit between my teeth and running hard uh, since February when I made that decision. Mm -hmm. uh, recognizing some, I think, key elements, gaining a lot of traction in this race on those elements, talking a lot about understanding that the essential elements of freedom are private property ownership and gun ownership. We have forgotten that. We have kind of pilfered away those rights. We ought not be having a debate in Austin about appraisal cap reform. We ought to be talking about eliminating property tax so that we truly restore property ownership in this state. That is, for me, a freedom issue, not just a fiscal issue. Clearly, the state has to address the fiscal implications of that move. But a consumption tax, a sales tax, is a much more effective and efficient way to raise govern, government revenue, to raise revenue for the, the essential services government needs to provide. And it is less burdensome on the economy. There's a study by the Texas Public Policy Foundation that says if we would eliminate all property tax in Texas and replace dollar for dollar, every property tax dollar that we raise with a sales tax, we'd see a $3 billion increase in net personal income and add 150,000 jobs to the economy. So it is a win-win for Texas. We restore true private property ownership, and we see a huge boon uh, to local income, to individual income, and to jobs in Texas, fighting hard for that. You think that you could do that with uh, a sales tax? You wouldn't have to institute an income tax or anything? Absolutely, right. Recognizing governments use income, property, and sales tax, income and property both very burdensome places the burden, the whole burden, for the support of the government services on one segment of the economy, and it is very burdensome and depressing on that economy. The sales tax, the consumption tax, is a much more fair, equally uh, distributed tax, and it allows the greatest economic uh, functioning and efficiency and prosperity. What if you don't own any property? What if you live, live in an apartment all your life or, or something like that? All you're doing is carrying the weight for somebody who's fortunate enough to own property, aren't you? Everybody, everybody lives somewhere, and everybody lives on a piece of land. We're not, we're not renting you know, apartments on Mars yet. So everybody in Texas that, that's in a, in a property is in some way um, paying that property tax. But here's the problem, I think, with property tax, really. There are two value. There are two... Uh, factors, the value and the rate. And because of our system, both of those get manipulated by the political establishment. They play with the rate, they put pressure on the appraisal district to play with the value, and they manipulate that so as to grow spending every year. The elected official says, oh, we've lowered the rate. The governor says, oh, we've lowered your rate. Where have you cut spending, sir? Spending grows and grows and grows. It's very difficult for the people to have an influence on that. When you go to a sales tax, politics can't manipulate the value of goods and services in the market. They have to do what elected officials ought to do, and that is just address the tax rate, the sales tax rate. And when they start monkeying with that rate, people will cry foul, and it will force government to limit its spending like it ought to be doing. It is a much fairer tax, allows the economy the greatest degree of efficiency and prosperity. Uh, you don't sound like a liberal socialist, then. Uh, no. I think I'm a constitutional <coughs> conservative. I talk a lot about restoring a constitutional republic. I think we've, we've and, and that's why I'm in this race, I think that our elected officials have, have um, forfeited on their promise to us to get government off of our back. Governor Perry has grown our dependence on Washington, D.C. He talks about having a balanced budget in Texas, but oh my gosh, and he, and, he, and he rails against the stimulus. But sir, you used a huge chunk of stimulus money to balance that budget and you've tripled our debt in Texas. That's not fiscal conservative management. It's management that would get you run out or on a rail if you were the CEO of a private company. You triple the debt 
and you um, say to your shareholders, oh, the, bu the budget's balanced without pointing out the huge liability, long-term liability that you've strangled them with, and uh, your shareholders would run you out of town. We've not had fiscal conservative fiscal management in Austin, Texas. We've got to get back to that. Um, Governor uh, didn't want to take uh, some stimulus money for uh, uh, unemployment. unemployment, and yet now we hear uh, because they didn't take it, uh, it's going to business taxes going to jump from 23 to what 67 percent. Uh, seems to me like would have been wise, perhaps, to go ahead and take it. I, I think we we cannot have both. We cannot be a constitutional republic that follows the rule of law, that has limited federal government, and take all of that Washington handout. That $500 million worth of unemployment stimulus was a drop in the bucket. We took billions of stimulus money from Washington. We've got to have people in Austin who understand and who will fight for a constitutional republic and a sovereign state and say, if it's not an enumerated power, for Washington, D.C., then Texas will address that issue. It is going to take us years to eradicate that federal intrusion into this body politic we call the great state of Texas. Uh, but we've got to draw a line in the sand, I believe, and not allow any more intrusion or invasion from Washington. Look at where we are transferring revenue to Washington and begin to halt that transfer. Um, we've got to look at ways and uh, places where Texas is spending money. Uh, we've talked about recently the health care bill coming out of Washington, but we've, we've allowed health care services to eat up a third of our budget in Texas. We're providing socialized medicine right here in Texas, and we have been for years under the governor's leadership growing that because Washington tells us to. We need to say, Washington, that's not your job. Texas will take care of Texans. Uh, that what, was a political ploy, I think, on his part. What, what money are you talking about here? Um, any money. Um, well, I, uh, you, you just said a third. The, 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 the medical budget has essentially grown, uh, what, you said three times. And right. you're basing that it on what? Well, no, the, the uh, health care spending <laughs> in Texas has doubled in the last eight years, and it eats up one-third of our state budget. The state of Texas is not just regulating and licensing health care. It is delivering health care. It's doing the very thing that we are concerned that Washington is trying to do. We've been doing that here in Texas. We've allowed Washington, D.C. to dictate our health care services to the indigent population, the Medicaid requirements. Um, we have to recognize that a free society rests on three pillars, individuals and families, communities and churches, and the government, and recognize that health care ought to first be the responsibility of the individual and family. And when they aren't able to meet those needs, the community and the church has historically been the provider, not the government. And in Texas, our own conservative Republican legislature has done a, a lot to remove the uh, free market or to chain the free market by adopting 60 mandates in Texas on health insurance. So it's tripled the cost of health insurance, which is not health care, but certainly reduces the availability of that service to people, the ability for them to pay those premiums and be able to get the kind of service that they need. Um, our own state legislature has done that, not at Washington's behest, but at the behest of lobbyists going to Austin, Texas. Has the tr problem doubled because the number of indigents has doubled? No. <clears throat> the problem has doubled because when something is free, more people take advantage of it. Because um, when Washington says jump, Rick Perry says how high, and we continue to grow that sub subservience, we need to remind people about what individual people like to talk about individual liberty, we need to remind them that along with that is individual responsibility. That is what keeps us all the most free and the most prosperous. Uh, where are you on border security? Really uh, recognizing that that is one of those constitutional duties of the federal government, but unwilling to continue to just hold our breath in Texas and wait for them to do that. Recognizing that the wealth of a nation is in our people. It is because we've drawn the best and the brightest from all over the globe to our country, 